In this video, we will learn about the significance of making pricing decisions to overcome uncertainty in the context of the retail industry. We will also look at the types and sources of uncertainty. In conclusion, we'll understand why our machine learning based solution is a clear improvement over conventional methods for optimizing prices under uncertainty. Let's begin with a business scenario. Shopworld is an international fashion retailer based in the US. The retailer is famous for its monthly new collection, featuring apparel for men, women, and kids. Shopworld's sales channels include its stores and website. Although the business was making profits, Shopworld observed that it could achieve better results. It saw an opportunity to use flexible prices, increase margins, and increase customer demand. However, it also found challenges within its operations, such as inconsistent pricing parameters in different countries, and the use of fixed price conversion tables. In particular, it realized the difficulty in reacting quickly to uncertainties in global markets and adjusting its prices manually. Retail businesses often face such problems in their operations. They need an intelligent solution that helps them work through uncertainties and fix optimum prices. We use artificial intelligence and machine learning to optimize decisions that are based on imperfect data. By doing so, we ensure the best results from uncertain outcomes. Our business results are essentially based on forecasts and predictions. Hence, we consider uncertainty to be the constant factor in all our estimates and calculations. An extreme example of uncertainty is a purely random event that is impossible to forecast. For instance, the number resulting from the roll of a dice. On the other extreme is a purely deterministic event that is easy to forecast. For instance, the picture of pendulums on the right hand side. Looking at it, we can easily predict what follows once the red pendulum strikes the white ones. Between these extremes, there are predictable events that are driven by systematic and random influences. Forecasting customer demand to achieve business goals, especially the reaction of the demand to price changes, is a great example of such an event. In a typical retail scenario, stores profit when goods are sold at the right price, and most stock is cleared periodically. Generally, to boost dull sales, the first step any business takes is to decrease prices. In such a scenario, the timing and extent of price changes impact demand in different ways. In this example, the demand forecast can be used to look at different, what if, situations. The first blue dotted line shows the probable effect if the price is reduced by 30% on the current day. The second dotted line is the corresponding effect of a 40% reduction next week. The key question here is which reduction works better to achieve business goals? To arrive at the correct price decision, you need to analyze all the uncertainties surrounding the forecast. For instance, the product could be very early in its life cycle, and due to only a few sales, the forecast is quite uncertain. Or, the product may be currently registering high sales due to a seasonal trend, which will not last long. Uncertainty can also come with external factors, such as the weather. So, if the weather changes suddenly, demand becomes uncertain. And finally, there's a randomness that cannot be reduced. For instance, a customer who forgot their credit card and left the store without paying for the many goods picked. All these different aspects make it impossible to arrive at a certain forecast. Therefore, we must take uncertainty into the picture while forecasting prices based on demand. In the retail business, there are three types of uncertainties. At one extreme are uncertainties that can be learned, explained, and quantified by looking at historical data. For instance, let's reconsider the example of weather that changes the demand for a product. To make predictions around this ambiguity, we consider both weather forecasts and historical data. By comparing the forecast with the observed weather, we can quantify future weather uncertainty. At the other extreme, there is the randomness of a single buying decision. Such events are always unpredictable, irrespective of the data available. This is randomness that remains irreducible, regardless of the additional data we analyze. Between these extremes are uncertainties, whose behavior in the future we can predict. For example, let us reconsider the product with uncertain future demand, as it's in the early stage of its life cycle. However, after the first few weeks, we can quantify the uncertainty. 
At this time, the product has more sales, and therefore, we will have data on its sales at different prices. As you can observe, we account for not only all types of uncertainty, but also prepare for the behavior of each one of them. To help us manage the uncertainties of retail data, we employ machine learning. At Blue Yonder, machine learning drives forecasts and optimized decisions. Machine learning algorithms provide full distribution function instead of mean forecast values. For example, given an input of product, attributes, location information, and any additional seasonal information, the forecasting engine provides a histogram to represent the distribution function of possible demands. In this way, we not only know that the mean demand for the product is 8, but also the probability of selling 1, 7, 12, or 14 pieces. In this example, there are three different histograms that all correspond to the same mean value. But the width of the histograms indicates the uncertainty of the forecast. On the top example, there's a high probability of selling less than 5 or more than 50 pieces. In the last example, the distribution is quite narrow, and the probability of selling an amount far away from the mean is much less probable. Thus, the machine learning algorithms provide an input, reflecting the certainty, or the uncertainty of the forecast. Now let us understand how machine learning helps retail businesses in decision making. Let's pick the clearance problem. Looking at the product life cycle, we observe that at the beginning, forecasting the rate of sales is quite uncertain. As we have little product history, we cannot classify it as a slow or average seller accurately. Making such a decision early on, entails a high risk of applying unnecessary markdowns and losing margins. On the other hand, towards the end of the life cycle, the product forecast is quite accurate. However, waiting for such a long period to make the first pricing decision is unprofitable. Especially when calculated markdowns are necessary to achieve inventory goals. The challenge here is to make the optimal decision between an early price reduction, with high uncertainty, and a late price cut, with low uncertainty. To make the optimal decision, we need to quantify and understand all three types of uncertainties. Early in the product life cycle, the forecast would resemble the lower graph. At time zero, the product has a stock of 50 units. The forecast shows how the stock could develop into the future, until the end of the life cycle, at time 50. We also see a high uncertainty, a probability of running out of stock too early, plus a probability of having high leftovers at the end. From historical data, shown in the plotted graph, we can learn how the slow, average, and top-selling similar products have been sold in the past. The blue point is an example of a slow-selling product. The orange point marks an average selling product, and green marks a top selling product. We can quantify how far the slow, average, and top selling products are away from each other. At time zero, we do not know if the product is a slow, average, or top selling product. The green forecast is the scenario for a high sale rate of the product. We have the orange forecast for an average product, and we have the blue forecast for slow selling products. Uncertainty with pure randomness can be seen here with the wiggling shape of the different scenarios, which we always must take into account. Considering all possibilities at this point in the life cycle, we have high uncertainty in the forecast. But we know that going farther into the life cycle, this uncertainty becomes smaller and vanishes. The decision-making engine is aware of this evolution of uncertainty, and learns to predict it accordingly. Let's now look at how the optimization engine helps in solving a real-life problem. The graph displayed here represents the clearance problem for a seasonal product, which sells very well only during winters. In the graph on the right, the label, today, marks the situation at the beginning of December. We have an inventory of 400 units for clearance. The red line indicates the sell-through rate target. The decision that we must make, is when to change the product price to achieve the sell-through rate target, at the end of the life cycle, which is in March. We have a forecast available for the inventory level at the current price, and as you can see in the confidence band, this forecast is aware of uncertainty. So how do we now come to an optimal price decision? The classical approach to this decision making is based on mean values, which does not take any uncertainty into account. 
It cannot predict the change in stock level if the current price changes to a new number. It does not have a what if analysis capability to suggest the price that helps us reach our targets. Instead of a what if analysis, if we use an optimization engine, we can automate this procedure. The engine recommends that in this scenario, the best decision is to apply an early price reduction that increases demand to achieve the sell through rate target. What would be the effect of including the uncertainty of demand resulting from the price change? Here, we can see that not only the new forecast is a solid line, but we also have the confidence bands that reflect the uncertainty of the forecast. Right after the price change in December, the confidence bands for the blue scenario become wider. The reason is that there's a higher uncertainty at the new price, given the elasticity of the product. If we look at the end of the life cycle, the sell-through target lies well within the confidence bands. It suggests a high probability of achieving our targets. So why should this not be the best possible price? In other words, how can we do better than that? Let's find the answer. The lower left-hand side graph shows the new price based on the mean value. The lower right-hand side graph shows the new price recommended by an optimization engine. Note that the optimization engine can handle uncertainty, with an awareness that it is reducing over time. The difference in these two outputs is that the new price, which is based on mean value, is a constant and certain line, while the uncertainty-aware optimized price is an uncertain value. The uncertainty-aware price represents the availability or the flexibility to react to the future, based on behavior learned until then. Comparing both decisions, we see that the mean value-based optimization is based on an initial price reduction of 50%. Uncertainty-aware optimization is based on a lower initial discount of just 40%. Note that this optimization is aware of a likely second price reduction, which is flexible in terms of timing, scale, and reaction based on learning. The impact of each decision on the inventory level is reflected in the confidence bands of the corresponding demand or forecast graphs. In the mean value-based optimization scenario, there is a high probability of being below the targets, starting from December and increasing until March. It is shown by the red line that lies within the confidence band. On the right-hand side, we see that flexibility of prices to react to observations enables controlling probability. However, the inventory is overachieving the target too early in the life cycle. So, until January or February, there is indeed a low probability of overachieving the targets. Only towards the end, the flexibility to further react to price changes is narrowing down the probability of achieving the target, and the mean value lies exactly at the targets. Note that the uncertainty of the inventory at the end of the life cycle is smaller in the right scenario. It corresponds to the fact that the optimization engine is aware of its flexibility to react to reduce uncertainty in the future. If the product sells better than average, the second price change will be smaller. If the product sells slower than average, the second price change will be earlier and deeper. This awareness of the optimization makes the difference in decision making. Even from a human intuition, this is the better decision. That is, instead of applying an early deep first price reduction that we cannot reverse, we would rather apply a smaller initial price reduction and maybe do a second one when needed. This decision is not based on gut feeling. It's, in fact, based on the quantified uncertainty that is balanced against the benefit of an early price reduction. When we make a better decision, taking uncertainty into account, we see a real difference in the prices. Moreover, we can even reduce the risk of leftovers at the end of the life cycle. With uncertainty-aware steering of inventory targets, we can lower the risk of exceeding inventory at the end of the life cycle, which means we can lower the risk of waste while still protecting margins. The primary benefit of the uncertainty-aware pricing decision is the lower risk of stock out early in the life cycle or excess stock at the end. Further, benefits can also be measured in KPIs. If we compare the outcomes of a mean value-based optimization, marked in red, and the uncertainty-aware optimization, marked in blue, on average, we have 7% more revenue at the end of a life cycle, with the uncertainty-aware optimization. This conclusion validates the idea that managing the risk of selling too early, or having excess inventory is also directly affecting our KPIs. Looking at the bigger picture, it is evident that a mean-based decision works only for a product that perfectly behaved like the mean. 
In the example we looked at, the mean base decision would be a good decision for products with a forecast identical to the orange region of the graph. For all other slower or faster selling products, the outcome of the mean based optimization will be suboptimal. Only uncertainty aware optimization can find the best solution for the whole variety of possible outcomes. Also, this positive effect does not vanish by looking at more and more products, because this situation of uncertainty is true for every single product. Therefore, looking at the average revenue accumulated over thousands of products does not change the positive effect that we can get from optimizing under uncertainty. So, how did Luminate pricing help Shopworld? The retailer partnered with Blue Yonder for a solution to optimize pricing for all products, automate pricing decisions, and replace fixed price conversion with granular price optimization. Blue Yonder analyzed the business challenges and implemented Luminate pricing as the solution. With Luminate pricing, Shopworld is able to automate market specific price settings and manage market wise steering of its pricing decisions. With artificial intelligence, the solution monitors the effect of price change on customer demand and recommends the right prices. The recommendations factor in several uncertainties, and pricing decisions are based on store specific and market driven priorities. The day to day price adjustment is now centrally managed at Shopworld, with remarkable efficiency. Also, intra seasonal pricing is done automatically with no manual intervention. In effect, Shopworld has gained immensely by deploying Luminate pricing. It has not only achieved its business goals and revenue targets, but has also evolved a reliable, long term uncertainty aware pricing mechanism. With this, we have reviewed how Luminate pricing solutions help you make better pricing decisions considering all uncertainties in your product lifecycle.